Our next guest is Laura Dawn. Laura is an author, a keynote speaker, and she's the host of the popular Psychedelic Leadership Podcast. Laura has an MSc specializing in creativity and change leadership, and her research focuses on the intersection between psychedelics and creative problem solving, helping leaders and teams consciously work with sacred plant medicines to think more creatively. So Laura, it's great to have you and welcome. Hi, Alex. Nice to be here with you. Yeah, it's great to have you. So Laura, I thought a nice place to start would be to get a sense of why of, of all the many things you could have devoted your life to, you've devoted it to to this area. You know, what what is it about uh, the world of, of psychedelics that drew you in? Well, I had my first high dose psilocybin experience when I was about 14. So I've been journeying for over 25 years at this point. And so it, it's interesting when people ask me, you know, how did you step into this industry? Well, it's like only recently become a, a quote unquote industry. And it sort of has been what has raised me. It's been mostly my path my entire life. I've also been an entrepreneur my entire life. So I've had these very strong parallel paths between altered states of consciousness and really looking at how do I amplify my impact in terms of what I'm contributing through my life's work. And I've always had that kind of deeply embedded mindset ever since I was really young. But more specifically, during the pandemic, I decided to go back to school and pursue a Master of Science and really looking at the intersection between psychedelics and creative cognition within the context of leadership development. And what drew me to that was uh, just such a severe lack of research in the area of psychedelics and creativity. And I don't think, you know, many people wouldn't argue, can they enhance creativity? Because all you have to do is look at the 60s, look at works of art, look at the Beatles. And, you know, I mean, look at indigenous cultures that are weaving intricate patterns like Shipibo tapestries as they work with medicines. So I don't think the question is can, but I was really curious about how. And so I spent three years really looking at the existing literature that really was just mostly focused on the intersection of psychedelics and the big four, you know, mental illness, depression, PTSD, anxiety, and addiction. And part of the reason that I was called so early was because I was struggling with addiction and depression as a teenager. And they were like, you know, just a breath of fresh air as I looked up at the cosmos and really started questioning my life and, you know, pulling me out of that small ruminative box of just going round and round with self. And I also grew up with a very deeply entrenched belief that I wasn't creative because I couldn't draw. And so it's interesting. We're kind of in this parallel cultural moment where both psychedelics and creativity are getting a major overhaul and rebrand cultural narrative is shifting around it so it's really fun to be at that intersection and so that's what i focused most of my time in graduate school was you know if we look at the existing literature what if we look under the hood of that literature through the lens of creativity research can we actually make a compelling case that psychedelics do enhance creativity despite the fact that that's not what the the actual study was focused on and when you start connecting the dots and really know what to look for i came to the conclusion of a resounding absolutely yes that we can make a very compelling case that for very similar underlying neurological reasons the same reasons that psychedelics help treat depression are very similar to the same reasons that they help enhance creativity. And so happy to unpack that more. But that was a big, a big call for me to go into this. And it was actually uh, Manesh Gurn, recently officially Dr. Manesh Gurn, he's just completed his PhD. He wrote a paper alongside uh, Robin Card Harris. And it was about connecting some of those initial dots. And that was something that was really interesting to me. And when I saw that paper, I started digging in. I was like, it's really, there's not a lot here. And so that's what I decided to, to really focus my graduate degree on. And it was very fulfilling and rewarding in so many ways. 